Hello again, and welcome to Rain Country, a land that shows itself off from the water. I'm Scott Foster. Each year, thousands of Southeast residents and visitors take to the water to take in the sights, like a thousand islands and 10,000 miles of shoreline, like deep fjords and flat river deltas, like shorelines with eagles and bear and deer, and like our waters with whale, and porpoise, sea lion, and seals. The Alaska Marine Highway System has some 1,700 miles of regularly traveled routes through these southeast sites. In the summertime, those ferries are almost full. It's a different story for those who travel aboard in the winter. All the areas of the ship are pretty open and sometimes it's like passengers having their own private yacht. In addition to having their own private yacht, wintertime users of the ferry system have some other advantages, like lower rates. Passenger fares are down 20 percent, cabins are 10 to 15 percent less, and the drivers of cars travel free. Youth groups can travel at half the normal rate. And if winter travel on the ferry is less crowded than summer for passengers, it's also less hectic for crew members. Oh, I think the difference is in the people that are traveling. Um, we have far fewer people traveling in the winter. And one thing that I really enjoy about working in the winter is that you have a lot more time to spend talking to people. Um, people seem to enjoy traveling more, and we do get a lot of regular travelers. Local residents in southeastern Alaska that use the ferries a lot. Uh, so many of the towns in the wintertime, you know what kind of trouble there is flying in and out. Uh, Wrangell and Petersburg, Haines. Uh, a lot of people enjoy taking the ferry, too, in the wintertime because it's not real crowded. So it's a much more enjoyable time of year to travel and to work with the traveling public. Uh, is there a difference in the number of people that want staterooms in the winter and the summer? No. I think all year round people want the staterooms. It's just that it's much nicer that we can accommodate everyone in the winter time. And of course that's another reason why local people travel more is that they know that they can get the accommodations that they want and need. And how about the solarium in the winter? Is that used much? Not very much. <laughs> you have to be pretty hardy to be up in the solarium. Mike Wilson is second steward on the Malaspina, and he's responsible for food and beverages. Wilson sees a different kind of passenger on the ferry in the winter. Well, I suppose primarily we see more Alaskans traveling in the wintertime as opposed to the summer. Um, there's also a noticeable decrease in the, in the amount of traffic, although some weeks out here in the wintertime we'll have over 100 or 150 uh, school kids traveling from one town to the next for, for meets or, or school activities or th things like that. Um, primarily we see a, a, a decrease in the amount of traffic and as a result the crews are cut back and the services curtail a little bit too as well as the scheduling is cut back as well. Marine highway officials say in the summer the ferries are usually 80 percent full. In the winter, that figure drops to between 30 and 40 percent. If the generally fewer passengers in the winter mean a more relaxed trip for some crew members, it's not the same for the captain. Well, there's a lot of things that are different uh, uh, to the people running the ships, uh, especially the navigation. We run into high winds and cold weather, and uh, uh, the crew is to have to wear real heavy weather and get out in the weather, especially at Skagway. We get to north winds here sometimes when the temperature is down below zero and the chill factor is way down 35 or 40 below and it's uh, it's a little bit tough sometimes. Uh, we've had north winds up to 100 knots in Lynn Canal to where uh, our normal running time from Auk Bay to Haines is uh, four hours and 15 minutes and it has taken us ten and a half hours. Uh, this only happened to me several times but uh, it was blowing so hard the ship would pound and you was taking uh, green water over the bow and your uh, wheelhouse was all froze up you couldn't see out because it would turn the ice the minute the uh, water hits the ship you see so but this is a, this is a very rare case the, one of the big problems is wrangle nails and surges nails and about the worst conditions in these nails are real heavy snowstorms they they're actually worse than fog 
And uh, if you start through the nails and uh, you get hit by one of these snowstorms, you, uh, you can't turn around and go back out. You have to keep going. And there's times when this has happened uh, where you can't see from one navigation light to another. And I have been in there on rare occasions when I couldn't see a navigation light as it went. Uh, the ship went right alongside of it, but this is not uh, very common. Although passengers and most crew members are inside on those bad winter days, that's not always the case. Sometimes bad weather or narrow channels require crew members to stand bow watch. Got freezing rain out there, that's pretty miserable to stand in. Snow, that's pretty bad. Uh, you wish you were inside the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you're counting the seconds until your relief shows up to get you out of there. But, uh, but they don't usually leave you out there for you know, so long that you're you know, frostbitten by the time you get in. But there are people that do come out and relieve you. It should be noted that there is plenty of calm weather during winter months. However, when the bad weather does hit, Captain Reeser responds. We try to make it as easy as we can. These, uh, these ships are actually not, uh, not sea ships. They're, um, they're built for inside waters, and you get out in the, in the big swells. They, uh, the way the hull is built, they'll hammer and pound and uh, scare the passengers. We don't want that to happen. There's no, uh, we're in no danger, but uh, you know, it's, it's not very comfortable. So we, we do try to take a route that is, uh, is more comfortable for the passengers. The Alaska Marine Highway System began in 1963 with the Malaspina, Taku, and Matanuska. Over the years, four other ships have been added. In addition to the 1,800 miles of routes in southeast, the ferry system travels about the same distance in south-central, primarily in Prince William Sound to Seward, Homer, Kodiak, and then periodically out the Aleutian chain. While there have been changes over the years, some traditions remain, particularly during winter travel on the state ferry system. I think you see a lot more of the, the, the older traditional feeling of the ferry system, you know, Alaskans having a you know, relaxing trip from, you know, as opposed to the summertime when there's a lot of tourists, it's hard to get a good place to see and to, and to, and to see things. I think it's a, it's a lot more relaxed atmosphere, there's no doubt about that. As I enjoy the passengers and in the summertime you don't have a lot of time to spend with them and it's uh, there are far fewer problems there's just a lot more problems in the summertime when there's lots and lots of people standing in line and all competing for areas of the vessel and services and this time of year we don't have that problem